students after a very long time we are returning to this text uh, we are on page 46 and line number we shall begin with line number 495 we have finished just before this uh, just before this we have, we have seen uh, Prospero uh, challenging what uh, Ferdinand has said he says when Ferdinand claims to be the best that speaks the language of Naples. He, Ferdinand claims that he is the best, that is, he is the king of Naples. Uh, Ferdinand uh, is challenged by Prospero by saying, How the best? What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? If the king of Naples were to hear you, calling yourself the best, man or the king of Naples, then what would you, what would you say? And Ferdinand replies to that by saying, uh, a single thing as I am now that wanders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me and he, that he does I weep. Myself am Naples who with mine eyes since, never since at ebb beheld the king my father wrecked. So he is uh, reasonable and he says, it's a single thing. That means it's one and the same thing. The calling myself the king of Naples, uh, it's, uh, it's the solitary thing. That is the truth. That is uh, one and the same thing. As I am now, that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. It's as amazing as I am at a shock to hear you speak the language of Naples. Because in a faraway, desolate, uh, lonely island, how come you speak the language of the people of Naples? I am wondering at that. I am amazed at that. In the same way, uh, you are amazed at uh, myself calling the king of Naples probably at this remote place. Myself and he, he does hear me. And the second part, he said, uh, if the king of Naples hears you, what would he tell? What would he tell? All right, he would definitely challenge you or uh, punish you for it. Okay, um, but the truth is, he hears me at present. So the belief was that it's not the belief, it's uh, after the, uh, at death, the body is separated from the spirit because humans are made up of body and soul. The body is the mortal aspect or the uh, aspect in us that decomposes. It is composed, the body is composed and it decomposes at death. Whereas the soul, the spirit of man that lives eternally and that's what he says. Who with mine eyes, so he hears me because spirit doesn't occupy any space, right? It has no volume, it has no uh, substance, it doesn't occupy, it has no mass and it doesn't occupy any space. So it is everywhere. Spirit can be everywhere. And as a spirit, the king of Naples is hearing me now, uh, since he is dead. Who with my eyes? And that's the reason why he says that uh, he does hear me. And that he does, I weep. He hears me at present. As a spirit, my father, his, that Ferdinand's father, can hear him. And that's the reason for his weeping. Because he is dead and uh, he's, uh, only his spirit lives now. Myself and Naples. Again, he stresses the fact he, since the death of his father, 
because the rule in those days was the rule of succession. That means the uh, the monarchy passes on from son to uh, father to son, and therefore he is now the king of Naples since his father is dead. Who with mine eyes never since at Yab? Who since mine eyes? Mine eyes are never at. Never at ever. That means never stopped shedding tears. And what did I behold with these eyes? I beheld. Beheld means I saw with my eyes the king my father wrecked. I saw myself with my own eyes. King, the king being shipwrecked. The ship wrecked, and as a result of that, my father drowned. I saw it with my own eyes. Miranda, alack for mercy, and she is moved with the grief or a pity, as he would say, uh, hearing this news of the death of uh, the king of Naples, this man's father. Ferdinand, yes, faith and all his lords, the Duke of Milan, and his son being twain. Twain means the two, two of them. All right, twain means two of them. All right, so he says, not only the king, all those lords who accompanied him in the ship, they all drowned. And uh, besides that, there were among these nobles or the lords who accompanied him, who was the Duke of Milan? He is referring to Antonio and his son, Antonio's son. The usurping Duke of Milan and his son also died. And he doesn't know that uh, uh, he is the usurping Duke. He considers him to be the actual Duke. And that's the reason in the next speech, Prospero, Prospero says it in an aside. And aside is a dramatic convention in which whatever is spoken within that aside, I have told you, is meant for the audience. And the other characters who are present on the stage do not listen to it. That is, that is the conventional understanding. So this is meant for the audience, information for the audience. The Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control me if now it were fit to do it. The Duke of Milan and his brave daughter. Now here it's referring to the Duke of Milan, the actual Duke of Milan. Prospero was the actual Duke of Milan. He is still the actual Duke of Milan. He was banished from uh, Milan by his uh, brother and his allies and his brave daughter that is Miranda could control thee. Control here means challenge you on this what you have spoken just now that the Duke of Milan and his uh, son drowned. That could be challenged. But he thinks it is not the appropriate time to do it. That's why he says if now, if it were fit to do it, if it was appropriate to do it, but the occasion or the time hasn't come, that's why he doesn't do it. At the first sight, they have changed eyes. Then he is speaking to them himself, and at the same time, the speech is meant for the audience. He is telling his thoughts aloud, in other words. They have changed eyes. That means they have fallen in love. That is, he's referring to Ferdinand and Miranda. At the first sight, they have fallen in love. So this is what we call love at the first sight. And he's so happy with it, Prospero, with the development. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. For this favor that you have done, this great deed of uh, making them fall in love 
at first sight. Hmm? He says, he shall be freed. Ariel is slave, his spirit uh, who is serving him shall be uh, set at liberty for uh, this favor. Delicate Ariel, delicate means having exquisite quality or dainty in spirit. So this was a very dainty spirit, a gentle spirit Ariel, which uh, served him. And he says, so a uh, reward for him that he shall gain his freedom. A word, sir, then he turns to Ferdinand. This is meant for everyone. All those characters on the stage shall hear this. A word, good sir, I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. He says, wait a moment. I think you have done something wrong. You have done yourself wrong by... Uh, calling yourself the Duke, uh, the King of uh, Naples, and secondly, he may also be referring to calling, uh, telling that uh, you have uh, wrongfully said that the Duke of Milan and his son are drowned. Miranda, why speaks my father so urgently? Urgently means unkindly. Unkindly. Uh, this is the third man that ever I saw, the first that ever I sighed for pity moved my father to be inclined my way. He says, this is only the third man I have ever come across. The first one was her father Prospero, the second uh, Caliban, the deformed slave who hardly had a human shape. And this is the third man. Ferdinand that uh, Miranda comes across and she says uh, and this is the only person who for whom I sighed for, I longed for, yearned for, I pined for. Pity, then she prays to pity to move the, move her fathers to be inclined her way. To be to incline, turn his heart or change his heart. Now that he is speaking roughly with Ferdinand. Ferdinand, if, oh, if a virgin and your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. He says, if you are still a virgin, that means a maid, unmarried woman, and your affection, your love, not gone forth. That means not engaged. You have not given your love to someone else. You have not promised to someone else. He says, I'll make you the Queen of Naples. I shall make you the Queen of Naples. I shall marry you, he says. And he is already vouched that he is the king of Naples and uh, he shall make, by making her his wife, he shall be making her the queen of Naples, Prospero. Soft, sir. So he says, it's uh, not so fast. Soft here means not so fast. You are too quick in what you are saying. One word more, you would shall not utter another word. And aside he says, they are both in either's power. They are both in one another's power. In grip. Here means grip. In other words, they have fallen for each other and therefore each has a hold on the other. But this swift business, I must make uh, I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. Alright? Now, here again is an aside, that is, a speech that is meant only for the audience, and it says, thinking aloud of uh, what is going on in the mind of Prospero. They are both in either's power, he says. They are in each other's power. In other words, uh, in uh, one another's power, but this swift business, he says, I must uneasy make. I must uneasy. Here means difficult. So, 
we should not acquire her so easily. The otherwise, uh, he says, less too light winning make the price light. He says, anything, what does that mean? Too light winning. Too light means with less effort. With less effort. And therefore, light winning make the price, the price light. That means the idea is that anything which is obtained easily seems to be valueless. Something when it is obtained so easily, then you do not give it much value or a worth. Therefore, I must make it difficult for a Ferdinand to obtain her, so that he shall cherish her. I charge thee, then he turns round and tells to Ferdinand, this is not an aside, so he's talking to Ferdinand now, one word more, I charge thee, I command you, you shall not utter another word, he says. Thou, that thou attend me, now you listen to me very carefully, attend me, means pay attention to me very carefully. Thou dost here assert the name of, name thou owest not. Now, the first charge that he makes at him is that you do here assert, take wrongful possession of. The name thou owest not. Owest means owns not. What is that? What is, what name does he take here wrongfully? Wrongful possession of the king of Naples. He calls himself the king of Naples. And that is a, that is one charge leveled against him by uh, Prospero. And second, and has put thyself upon this island as a spy. And I am sure that you have landed on this island as a spy. You are a spy on this island. You have come spying on me. And what is your purpose? To win it. To take over this island from me. And from me. To win it from me, the Lord on it. To Take it away from me. Who is the Lord of it? Who is the master of it? You have come here as a spy with the purpose of taking away this island from me. Who is uh, the master of this island? So these are the two charges that are leveled at, uh, at uh, Ferdinand. And then he goes on to say, uh, Ferdinand says, replies, no, as I am a man, this is definitely not by my word, as I am a man. Because in those days, a man's word was a word of honor. A man's word was considered to be a word of honor. That means he shall not go against it. And therefore he says, I give you the word of honor that I have not come for this. These charges are false. And Miranda supports him by saying, There is nothing in ill can dwell in such a temple. If the sp ill spirit have so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell with it. There is nothing ill. Ill here means evil can dwell, abide or live in such a temple, because uh, uh, this is also an allusion to the Bible in which in St. Paul's letters he refers to the, the humans as the temple of God, in the same way he says in this temple. So Ferdinand is referred to as a temple of God where Nothing evil can dwell. The evil spirit cannot dwell or abide or stay because he is a picture of virtue. If the ill spirit, that is evil spirit, have so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell with it. Even the good will strive to dwell, make an effort to 
live in that uh, live in that house all right so this is impossible that uh, uh, anything evil can dwell in uh, such a virtuous person and uh, as a as Ferdinand and therefore it is no evil can dwell in him so she affirms that so you we understand that uh, uh, though formally not educated uh, Prospero has given her sufficient wisdom sufficient education because she uh, speaks here like a learned lady and Prospero she then next what we are going to see is Prospero is going to punish him and the purpose of punishing him is punishing Ferdinand is to uh, make the acquisition of uh, Miranda uh, difficult for him, hard for him, tough for him, so that he shall cherish, cherish his achievement. Okay? Then to Ferdinand he says, follow me, speak not for him. And uh, so he is asked to follow him and whereas uh, in the meantime, Miranda, what she has spoken in favor of him, he reprimands her for that. Speak not for him. You shall not speak for him on his behalf. He is a traitor. He is a traitor. A person who commits a crime against one's own king or a country. So he is, a, he is betrayed his country. Come, I will manacle thy neck and feet together. I shall... I shall put you in chains. Manacle means chains. I shall put you in chains. I shall tie your neck and, uh, and feet together. So you shall not be able to run away, get away from here. Sea water shalt thou drink. You shall survive on salt water, sea water. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels. You shall survive on the uh, mussels here refers to a type of a small tiny fish that is found in the brooks or rivers, fresh water. Withered roots, that's dry roots and husks with it. All right? That is, and husks wherein they are called curdle. All right? So you shall have for food the dry dried roots and husks that is the outer shell of grains wherein the acorn cradled a corn the corn of the pine tree is cradled with a corn in it that's what you are you shall be feeding on and follow me he commands him to follow him and Ferdinand doesn't uh, he is a young gallant boy and he would not easily submit to that. He says, no, I will resist such entertainment till my enemy has more power. I will resist such entertainment. Entertainment here means treatment. I shall not permit such treatment of me. I shall not allow myself to be manacled or chained until a time when my enemy has more power over me. Until my enemy proves to be more powerful than me. And he draws his sword and is charmed from moving. So he draws his sword in order to enter into a duel with the Prospero. And Prospero casts his magic spell over him and by that magic he is held by that magic power he is a, or a magic spell he becomes powerless he is frozen he stands in that position with the drawn sword okay we'll stop at that for today we shall continue in our next class